Cheers. Lemon water. I wanted to let y'all know that the fuck upness of my family is becoming less fucked up, which is really great. Um, my mother, the viper, is no longer a viper. She's the pathologically narcissistic parent who did a number on her, her children on, on this particular one. Uh, but I have survived. <laughs> Rise to the occasion. And hey, if that is what I set up for my life challenge, and I have met that challenge. And narcissists do die. And the daughters of a narcissistic mother uh, do uh, go on to live fruitful lives, albeit without a healthy partner. So currently I am without a healthy partner. And if you're following my video vlog, you know that I worked a guy in, really enjoyed being with him. And then lo and behold, okay, he takes a woman of my stature and caliber and sexual, um, um, you know, razzmatazz, like I really love sex, uh, a monogamy, I'm a, I'm a very hot monogamist. He takes a woman who just turned 60, me, who cannot get pregnant and insists on wearing a condom. And not only does he insist on wearing a condom, he wears one that unbeknownst to him because he wasn't observant, uh, I think maybe he has a little bit of a sexual hang up. Uh, it has like polka dot studs all over it. So it felt like sandpaper. It felt like sandpaper. And I, uh, I developed a BV, which is a, a uh, bacterial uh, that is part of the natural uh, part of the human body. We all have bacteria, good and bad. It's the overgrowth of the negative bacteria that creates problems. And so it created vaginosis, which is an odor. It creates a smell. Now, again, I'm not a doctor. It's not medical advice, but the combination of neem oil and coconut oil inserted into my love canal took care of that for me. And then also I have been doing colloidal silver um, because I got some sort of sickness on my 60th birthday, like be right before, three, three days before it, I had to cancel all my, um, my party. I was going to have this big party, wonderful time. And I had all these friends coming over in a bonfire, you know, the whole kit and caboodle. And I had to cancel my big six zero. So technically it never happened. <laughs> So anyway, okay, so I'm in my sunny glory years where I get to have sex unprotected with a monogamous lover because I can't get pregnant. So the fear of pregnancy was always the number one mood killer when I was a, a young woman. And now that I can have unprotected sex with a monogamous lover, you'd think it would be like, ooh la la, let's go to town. Let's do this every day. It's so much fun. But no. Apparently, I have a bigger appetite than he does. And not only do I have a bigger appetite than he does, I'm not uptight. So, what happened is I let him know. I let him know uh, uh, that I cannot be with him sexually anymore because now I associate him with pain. And I don't want his hands on me. I don't want anything because all I can remember is... The sawing feeling of being sliced into by a sandpaper dick. <laughs> now, this condom situation is no, nothing new, all right? I had to use some sort of a birth control uh, when I was with my children's father. And uh, I we used condoms. And they hurt me then, too. So it has nothing to do with juice. I went on to... This little YouTube thing, toxic condom, do, 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 search YouTube. Finally found this woman who does this entire reportage on it. If you go to my playlist, click on health is one of my playlists. I believe that's globally available and uh, you'll find it. Okay. Just go to, go to my channel, go to playlists and I've got a bunch of playlists. Some of them are fun. They have like dance tunes from when I was a stripper and then they've got um, the ones on health and things that uh, work for me. So she has the same thing to say about it. She's in a hot monogamous relationship. She's just onesies with her man. And therefore, they can have really wonderful, unprotected sex. 
uh, and knowing when, and, uh, because she's young, she has to count her ovulation and know when she's fertile. Well, the other way you tell if you're fertile is the viscosity of the mucus in the vagina, okay? So if it's really thin, you're fertile and you're gonna get pregnant. If it's thick, uh, uh, considering that you're healthy and you don't have an infection like yeast, right? It is thick, then you are good to go and you won't get pregnant. But I'm not responsible for you becoming pregnant. I'm not a doctor and this is not medical advice, okay? It's just what I did, huh? So, uh, yeah, that lover is over. Um, and, you know, sex is very important to me. There's only one reason to have a man in your life, and it's for the sex. And I would think he would feel the same way. Now, that sounds cold and callous, but that is why men and women are together. They create a battery together. And if you're not having sex with your man, what's the point? You better have met him when you were young. He better be really handy around the house. He better supply you with protection, guidance, you know, security, roof over your head. At my lovely time of, of, of life, in which I am not going to become pregnant, and I love a good roll in the hay, you would think a man in his 40s would dig it. But no, they're uptight. What is wrong with these guys? Hey, so... um. I have a new favorite boomer. Sorry, Raymond. <laughs> I, my new favorite boomer was my date last night. And we yucked it up. We had a good time. We talked about, like, not my situation. I didn't, I just revisited him. I met him in 2015 because of Match. And at the time I met him, I was still emotionally caught up with that narc in Virginia. I, and I just hadn't learned the lesson I needed to learn. And I explained to him about the arousal jag. And I explained to him how my programming and my conditioning and grooming was such that I was set up to always be in these lousy relationships with these men because they mirrored home, bittersweet home. And that now that I have embraced health and well-being, nothing else will do. So a condom and a man who must uh, have his lady wear one is hiding something. They're probably swingers. They probably are on... Um, a uh, app or they're just plain fucking up tight and why would i a uh, her, woman who loves her body who loves her sex life who can dance like a vixen why would i be with an uptight guy so i had to ask myself what happened there <laughs> where did i go wrong oh man and my friend Kim said, Kat, don't set yourself up for disappointment. And I go, I know, I know. I know that my mind can create this wonderful fantasy show in my head. It's what kept me in my narcissistic relationship for so long. I am really good at developing fantasy in my head. So I know the dangers of it. So I was not going to have delusions or illusions about this guy. But when he laid it on down that I had to experience the condom or there was going to, or, or, uh, or, or, or that was going to be it. That's like, I had to, uh, grin and bear it and I shouldn't have. So that's what I'm going to tell girls. The second it went in, it stung the second. And it felt like I was being stabbed by a sharp object. It was not pleasure at all. It was what you would do to torture a woman if you hated her. That's what it felt like. Maybe he does. Hmm. Maybe he has deep-seated hatred for women. I mean, he's another one of these people who has no relationship with his mom. Very, very rocky one, so I keep attracting that type, right? So it's like, it's about time I meet a boomer whose mother is dead, and I think I did last night. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the boomers, as long as they take their boner medicine, okay? So, yeah, truth be known, I was like, oh, geez, yeah, uh, you know, I know there's nothing wrong with me and I know it's all about the condom. Uh, I'm all organic and I feel sensitively and I love pleasure. So I, w I would not ever, ever have sex with a condom um, ever again. Because number one, if you're having sex with a man who wants to wear a condom, then he's not to be trusted at all. And I told him, and, and I told this guy, the ex now, my new ex, the latest ex. <laughs> I'm quite sure uh, 
We're not gonna deepen this relationship any. He went deep enough with that sandpaper dick of his. Not gonna happen, I'm done, I'm done. Um, the good news is, the good news is, is it did free up my energy. Uh, I, I do put energy into a relationship. And and now I'm like, all right. Um, so that wasn't going anywhere fast. And um, it, it wasn't exactly like uh, he was uh, all of that uh, available um, for me sexually, which is why you are with a man as a female. So yeah, the things that I told in my video uh, yesterday, I'm gonna reiterate. Number one, semen is a bonding uh, elixir. It's a powerful, potent elixir. I don't eat semen, and no guy's gonna come on my face. That's disgusting. That's for porn stars and drug addicts. Um, semen has one place it goes, and it's in my love canal when he is satisfied um, himself and is able to let go and release and trust and be sexual with me. And you have to build up the trust, all right? I don't meet a guy, hey, how are you? Uh, do you take boner pills? Um, or, or do you have any STDs? Uh, hey, how about, uh, how about this? Um, wanna roll? Wanna roll with me? No, you have to have an emotional bond. You have to create uh, history together. You have to go on road trips. You have to have like some fun and frolic and flirtatiousness and share life together, you know, sandwiches. <laughs> and, and then you build up to it and you build up to it. But now it's going to be, I'm going to ask right away. After the woman goes through your test of acceptability and after you've been accepted by her, you know, me, what are your hangups sexually? Do you have to turn the light out? Can I see your dick? Can I actually see it? And here's the other thing, all right? I don't get down on that thing and start going to town orally right away, nor do I expect it. It takes a while for me, and every single one of my men has been uh, very happy with what I have delivered. I know that for a fact because if they've got a wonderful, nice, large heart on, and they're giving me wonderful sex, I know they're happy. Except for that last one, um, who was uh, a, a uh, he was always upset when I was leaving, and he always just wanted to fuck me and then go take a shower. And that sort of like, take that, I'm in control. You may be leaving and going back to your work, uh, and but I'm, I'm gonna like do you and then just do my life and like you never even existed and then I'm gonna get drunk and do the bartender. Oh, well, he wore condoms. I found them. I was like, okay, I guess you're having sex, right? And he couldn't deny it. But uh, he told me he wasn't having sex since I went back to him. So apparently 20, between 2019 and uh, 2021 when I left him, uh, because, you know, we were together, we would break up. We would be together, we would break up. We always broke up because he was a narcissist asshole. And I was uh, kept in my brain having my trauma amnesia. That's the other phenomena that happens with women who have uh, toxic partners. Is they future fake and they tell you, I'm sorry, I learned my lesson this time. You're the best thing that ever happened to me. I want you in my life. I'm going to do what I can to, to maintain myself so that you and I can grow old together and you aren't going to leave me. Um, I'm going to, you're going to stay with me until I'm dead. You know, that sounds like a threat actually. I remember saying to him, I go, you know what? You would rather have me die than leave you. And he couldn't disagree. <laughs> and I tortured him and tormented him by my existence because he felt something for me. So a narcissist has to have sex with the neighbor. They have to get drunk and then see through beer goggles and think that bartender is attractive in order to maintain what they consider having one up on their lady because it gives them a sense of control. They're sick fucks in here, right? Well, that's what I discovered this, this guy was. I mean, come on. In his 40s with a hot mama like me, I'm a gilf now. A grandmother I'd like to fuck, that's what I've been called. And I'm like, thank you, I'll take the compliment. But I'm a hot monogamous woman. And so got this guy ready to go. He thought really good. 
and um, I got sawed by sandpaper dick. Uh, so I haven't heard from him at all since yesterday uh, because I laid it in. Uh, and that was the other conversation I had with my new favorite baby boomer. Sorry, Raymond. <laughs> I know you're married or we're married and you have a daughter and you're far away and you and I are an item. But I'm going to flirt with you just a little bit. <laughs> my, my new favorite baby boomer uh, lives locally. And um, we had a nice conversation about SEX. Yes, we did. And I said, why bother? Why do you want to be in a relationship unless that's happening at least once a day? Okay. Okay, if it's every other, that's cool with me. If it's every three days, no problem. <laughs> but if you keep an active, happy, sexual sex life, you are going to live longer. You're going to have more jube jube to add to the world. And it's just the better for everybody, okay? It keeps the, the wheels greased. It keeps the energy flowing. Yeah. <laughs> so he's my new favorite baby boomer. So we had this conversation about sex and... And, and he was not adverse to going down on his lady if she's not climaxing. And he knows they take longer to, to, to climax. Women take longer to climax the older they get. Uh, um, but, you know, we also require a lot of foreplay. And uh, anyway, I, I didn't, we didn't get into too many details, but we snuck, we, we, uh, we giggled a lot. So it was kind of fun. And uh, I was just like, all right. Uh, my, my my second husband was born in 1954. This guy's 56. I go, you're doable. <laughs> and, and, and am I interested in him sexually? Um, don't know yet. We have to go on road trips. Uh, he has to continue to be this funny guy. Uh, I have to continue to be sort of like ooh la la and not get my hopes up. And at this point, I just want sex that doesn't hurt. You know, without a condom and without an STD. And without a lying person fucking the bartender. Oh, yeah, that's why. Right. Okay, I was going to tell you, yeah. Um, he said he wasn't having sex with anybody, but I was like, okay, what are these earrings doing underneath the bed? Hmm? <laughs> what a dumb dumb. They get so drunk that they don't even know everybody else is sober. And then he would accuse me. Oh, you know what? You led into our neighbor, um, Paul, and... Uh, you got into his face, into his face, and you were trying to pick a fight with him. Now, I wouldn't drink so that I could memorize the night and know when he was gaslighting me. And all I said was, "That didn't happen in my reality." I don't have to do damage control because no damage happened. The only one that's damaged is you and the brain. So that was the ex. I mean, always a good story, right? But, you know, get out your little violin. Uh, that that, 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 that um, guy is in my past, that toxic, lying fiend of a person who's damaged goods. He can now think about the wonderful pussy he used to have, me, and uh, fantasize that um, he... he uh, Whatever he wants. I don't care. I'm just so happy that I don't have him in my life anymore. And, oh, that's what we were, okay, this is what it was. I was talking to my new favorite boomer, and I said to him, gosh, I turned 60 and things changed. And he goes, yeah, you're in the fuck you um, phase. And I was like, is that what it is? Because it feels glorious. And the fuck you phase is when you don't care about anybody anymore if, they, uh, if they're hurting you. If, if, if my ex-lover, the latest one, the 40-year-old something, his desire to, and insistence on wearing a condom with a woman who can't become pregnant, who hasn't had sex with anybody since October 2021. This is January. I mean, it's a full year plus later. I haven't had sex. Uh, and like, it, it was like, it felt like I was a virgin. Like having him, a, a, a man enter me with a sandpaper dick if that was my first experience, I'd never have sex again. I'd be like, what's the fucking big deal? It's awful. I'd never want to do it again. I would want to shoot my man if he tried to have sex with me. I would plot his murder. I'm just kidding. <laughs> That's how bad it was. So, 
I'm not getting any uh, text messages from the now new ex, my latest ex, and so therefore I know it's over. And again, I don't want to be with a man who insists on wearing a condom, and that's the only kind of sex he can have, which makes me think he's got sexual hangups, and he wouldn't let me see his penis, and I, uh, you know, went up to him, and he was putting it on, and I started, you know, kissing him from behind, and then I was, then he turned around and was standing up, and then he, he just led me back to the bed. He just wanted me to lay down and not look. I wanted to see. <laughs> I'm a healthy, sexual, red-blooded woman. I'm a hottie. <laughs> My God, these men have sexual uptightness. Oh, I guess it was all those years in the peep show, huh? That's how I made my way through school. And I was on the stage, and I just, like, love to dance, love to... Uh, and I, I would love to do a strip tease for my man. I would love to. I'd love to give him a lap dance. All right. So I hope my new favorite boomer, the guy I met last night, I hope things turn out. I wouldn't mind rolling in the, under the covers with him, making our own thunder. <laughs> it'd, it'd be kind of fun. Okay. So enough about me and my sex life. I know it's interesting though, isn't it? It's like, ooh, what's going to happen next? Well, we'll find out. But, um, Things are okay and all's well in the Western Front. Uh, my sister and my brother uh, met with a financial advisor with my dad and they're working some things out financially and that's good. So uh, now we have to figure out who and what is gonna happen with my mother because apparently insurance is gonna uh, end because she's a, a line puller. I mean, that's the name that you give to a um, uncooperative older person who doesn't want lines in them. So basically it was intravenous tubing that fed her endocarditis with uh, antibiotics and she needed to go another four weeks and to complete the therapy. And and meanwhile, I'm like, well, she didn't take that ba-ding, 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 ba -ding four times. Maybe she wouldn't have had these blood clots. But everyone says online, it's uh, correlation, not causation. And I say, well, all right, denial ain't just a river in Egypt. <laughs> in this case, can you imagine the lawsuits that would happen? The United States of America would already, which is already um, in trouble, would be even worse off bankruptcy-wise. It would owe the American people, um, but that's not going to happen. They're, we're owned by a mafia, so, you know will be Snowball's chance of living in hell if, if uh, people actually got redempt, redemptive, redempt, redemption for the stuff that's occurred medically. Uh, but I say this, it's a choice and it's volunteer. And she volunteered for those shots. And now she's receiving the result of it. Just like I volunteered to experience that uh, sandpaper dick. And now... I am healing myself, thankfully. The vag didn't stink as much. Like My treatment of it is actually working. Um, the video before this one uh, shows you. But I, I, uh, not medical advice, I'm not a doctor, but I use colloidal silver, I use neem, uh, also coconut oil, and it felt so good to like have that neem oil up there. My pussy was purring. <laughs> Again, felt so happy. And I was like, oh, I'm going to bounce back from the saw that I experienced, also known as awful, terrible sex with a condom. And the guy was going and going and going. And I finally had to be like, listen, uh, um, I can't take much more of this. <laughs> I'm in pain, not pleasure. Um, nice to be in your arms. Nice to be naked. But hey, I just don't want to carry on. And... Men are desensitized when they wear those things. It take them, takes them longer to come. And he'd only had like four years of sex to my 27. I'm talking, when you wake up in the marriage bed and you feel over and your man's like ready to go and so are you and you just get all aroused and then the next thing you know, you're making love and everybody's happy and then you're just like having this best time and it's just ecstatic and waves of pleasure taking over your body, you know. Stuff like that. Like good old healthy sex. Apparently, I uh, 
am discovering there aren't that many men who know how to. <laughs> I was telling my new favorite boomer at our, our little cocktail party for two last night. I go, um, well, you know, I, I did see a guy in, in 2017 before I, I, I moved from downtown. And uh, I go, gosh, um, he may have been small, but he sure was proud. I go, my thumb was bigger. We laughed. <laughs> I couldn't believe how proud his little dicky was. And he, he, had, he had told me, this man, that his wife for the last two years wouldn't have sex with him. And I was like, it was no surprise because when he and I did it, finally, um, once he was finished, it was like over. And I was like, ah, what about me? Off he goes into the shower. And I was like, huh, interesting. What do I have to do, beg? And so I had planned on making love to him and making dinner, making love to him at my place and letting him know what uh, it is to please me so that I would uh, then want to be with him um, for a longer period of time. We were exclusives, you know. We had got worked through all of those details and he didn't wear a condom. I don't think one would have fit him anyway. <laughs> It was, he was too tiny. He could have wore a finger cut for, you know, estheticians and stuff. We use these finger cuts that are just like dildos. That's all it would have taken for him. <laughs> a finger cut. A poor guy. There are men with little tiny penises out there. But, you know, I'm willing to work with it. But you know what he had also did, which pissed me off? He clipped his pubic hair and he was proud of it. So when he grinded me, it was like I was getting chafed. So these are the questions you have to ask a man. Uh, do you have any S STDs? D when was your last partner? I don't want to get any vag uh, residue from any another woman. It will give me a yeast infection because you can't miss those. You can't mix the floors and the faunas from one female to the other. You just can't do it. And it's like you have a problem with like the wet spot. Like can we like lay in the bed and just avoid the wet spot and, and hang out in each other's arms? <laughs> uh. <laughs> and like. Are you trimming your pubes? Because if so, you better let those things grow in so they're nice and soft. I don't care how big you are. I just don't want to get chafed. Yeah, sex is messed up. You know, it's so funny. Sex is fucked up on this planet. There aren't enough people who know how to do it. Shall I go into sex ed, maybe? Give people lessons? Well, if you want to message me, <laughs> I'll let you know a thing or two. Uh, I will charge you for it, though. So keep that in mind. All right, so I, in the future, not just yet, February, I'm going to be going out to Arizona. Hopefully my mother will be in uh, a good space and healthy and that my parents will have a place to live, either in-house nursing at their house or in a facility. It's yet to be determined. But in the meantime, uh, I have a new favorite boomer. And only time will tell whether or not we take it to the next level. One day at a time, folks. One day at a time. Enjoy your life. I'm enjoying mine. Uh, I have this new rekindled energy and this nice, wonderful, I turn 60, fuck you, don't fuck you attitude if you've got hangups sexually. And again, I'm locale to my, my people and there seems to be plenty of men that would love to be with a hot-blooded woman like myself. They have to pass through my scrutiny, of course. And... Sexual compatibility actually turns out to be pretty darn important. And uh, yeah, that's not all there is to life. And eventually there's companionship and conversation. So that does go without saying. But now I'm realizing my days are 